All right, so for today, you can probably tell how tired I am. Today is Sunday. This is the last day I have to work on this Sprite before Ken takes it out to the Austin Healy Conclave. I've been working 12-hour days to try to get this as close to done as possible. I have yet to try to drive the car. I've only started the engine with it on the lift. So I'll give you a little tour on what's updated since the last time I talked to you. The first thing you'll notice is I do have a hard top fitted to the car now. Just painted that top this week. So got the top polished out, got the car all polished. I do have plates on the car now. Right now the steering wheel is just sitting there. I need to get it outside so I can center it. But I do think I have all the gauges working now. I haven't tested the speedometer yet. I still need to finish the check straps and some of these interior panels. But although the wiring isn't done yet, I have it all cleaned up and ready for the show on the inside for the most part. I have the radiator fan all wired up now. I found out that I did need a relay and a bunch more wiring that was not designed into the wire harness. Apparently when they built the wire harness, they designed it to plug into a relay and none of the rest of the wire were there so I had to add this jumble real quick doesn't look the best and clean it up later after the show I have a hose for the advance on a distributor now runs over to the carburetor there I also have a hose for the boost gauge comes out of the supercharger here runs over through the firewall right there and down to the boost gauge I think that the brakes and clutch work but I haven't tested it yet so I think that's what I'll do right now uh, back this out for the first time and see if it drives. Okay, here we go. We turn the main power on. Then we turn the ignition switch on. We'll see the tack cycle. There's the telltale and that should come back down. That will report the maximum RPM that we hit. Now we're ready to start it. You can see that the chronographic tack works a little bit different than a regular tack. It's not smooth, it jumps around quite a bit. And then that telltale stays there for a second at the maximum RPM that you reach. So you can see it stayed at 2000 there. So it looks like we're idling at about 1050 to 1100 right now. Down here on the boost gauge, it says we have five PSI of vacuum. Here on the amp meter, it looks like the generator works. It does go positive when we give it a little bit of gas. Our oil pressure is good. So let's back it out, see if the clutch and brakes work. The shop right now because it's a bunch of stuff that we're Ken's going to be taking out to California. So the steering wheel's not held in right now. I need to make sure that we're driving straight. It'll brake. Brakes do work. Now I'll take the steering wheel off and center that. Now I'll go back and put the nut on. Then I know that the alignment is right and the steering wheel is straight as well going down the road. It's 11 o'clock at night on Sunday night, and I'm finishing up the Schrock Supercharged Sprite. I'm going to re-bleed the clutch, and then the car is as good as it's going to be for the Healy Conclave out in California. I'm going to go get some sleep, and I'll see you in the morning.
Today's the day that the Sprite's being loaded up and sent out to California. So what did it take to get this car to this point? Here's how bad the car looked when it came in. Uh, Ken had drug it out of the Arizona desert, got it media blasted. Someone had modified where the pedals go. You can see that the floor had been cut out in areas. The car was just in really bad shape. We did only put front floor pans in it, so that helps out a lot. We always make this modification to the front frame rail. We clearance that for the crank pulley. It gives a lot more room. You can slide a belt on and off without removing the engine. Here's the car in primer before paint. Ken wanted the car to look great, uh, not only on the outer body work, but also underneath. So we sanded all that, prepped it just like we would normal body work. Gave everything a good skim coat. Here's the engine. Hap Waldrop at Acme Speed Shop. Built the engine, put the supercharger on it, shipped it out in a crate. The engine hadn't been run yet. Here's a look at the special 22-way adjustable Armstrong shocks. As far as we know, nobody had put this setup into a left-hand drive car, and we didn't know if there would be clearance for the steering rack. So we just had to throw it into the car, start setting up the steering, and seeing if we could make it fit or not. Here you can see the steering coming down right underneath this, the supercharger. We just happen to have just enough room to make that work. Here's the building of the custom airbox. There was not a whole lot of room next to the pedal assembly to do this, so everything is just fit in there with just the slightest amount of clearances left. Here's creating the scoop for the airbox on the supercharger. We did that to blend in with the bug eye headlights on the front. I think the shape looks like it could have been there from the factory. The original seats that came with the car were just in terrible, horrible shape. There was almost nothing left of them after blasting them. It was apparent that these were just not even usable. So we had to track down new seat backs as well as new seat bottoms. We did try several different locations for the Twin Master. We originally wanted to put it on the center console, but it just seemed like it got way too much in the way of the shifter. So we ended up moving the Twin Master up on the dashboard. The center console is modeled off of another rally car. The roll cage also was built so that it could go underneath both the soft top and a hard top. So the clearances are really tight on that thing. Here's a look at the car with a white hard top on it. These are the pictures that were submitted to the FIA on the homologation forms. And of course today, now it's wearing a black hard top, which gives it the look of the black soft top that the car that it's modeled after would have originally had. Well, there it goes. It's out of my hands. It's up to Ken now to get it there. If you happen to be at the Austin Healy Conclave this year, check out this car. I think it has a special parking spot marked out for it. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.